what we are going to do next is to change our SSID lm-internal into local switching mode. So to do that, we get back onto our controller. Under the debulan, select the debulan ID or SSID. We'll go under advance and then right here we have an option to change it to flex connect local switching. So we'll select that and then apply then click OK. Make sure it took the setting and it did. Okay, so once the SSID is enabled with local switching, now we have to go onto the access point and take a quick look at the VLAN mapping and make sure it looks correct. So here we select our LM-AP1. Under the Flex Connect tab, we have the VLAN support checked. And the native VLAN is the VLAN 64, which is the VLAN for our management IPs of our access point. Okay, and if we click on the VLAN mapping, you can see we have the LM-internal that we just changed to local switching by default mapped to VLAN 64 as well, but you can actually change that to whatever VLAN you like. But in our lab scenario here, we happens to use the same VLAN for both AP management and the user traffic for the SSID. Okay, so now the SSID is operating a local switching. Let's go back before we do anything else onto our test machine. We can just uh, disconnect since we're going to be using support one to test and reconnect. And then we are connected. Let's make sure it came in. You can see here with the support one, the repeat count went up. That means it came in again. And on the controller, go back to monitor, client, and look under the MAC address. One thing that's changed is the data switching before it was central. Now it's become local, although authentication is still, or it's actually always central. Okay, we scroll down, still user support one. But if you look at right here with the override ACL name before it was the LM, if you remember LM internet only, but now it's no longer there. Okay, and now if you're trying to access the internal resource from the machine, 32.40, and you can see that we can successfully hit our internal server our web server, which is totally incorrect because this particular user should only have internet, but obviously that's not working because the, uh, the name ECL didn't get enforced on the user. Okay, this user still have internet access, so that is fine. And the reason why the name ECL stopped working is because it's not supported with the local switching mode as it said in the documentation right here. So this is for wireless BYOD for Flex Connect deployment. And if you scroll down, there's a table here that lays out the metrics of uh, supported features. If you look under Flex Connect local switching column and for authorization, you can see it said VLAN only and static ACL per VLAN supported. As opposed to if you look on the next two column for whether it's a flex connect center switching, which is what we had configured initially, or local mode is actually support dynamic ACL assignment. Okay, so dynamic ACL assignment is not supported with flex connect local switching. So the next option that we have is static ACL per VLAN support, and this is what we're going to configure next. So the way this is going to work is we're going to have to place the users that's required different privileged access into different VLANs and then based on the VLANs we have to configure a static flex connect ACL that will restrict access from those VLANs. So going back to our diagram here we have a VLAN 64 and 65 lineup with 64 is going to be permit everything VLAN while VLAN 65 we're going to configure it so only internet access is permitted. Okay so the first thing we need to do is to add the VLAN 65 to the controller because the controller now needs to have a knowledge of VLAN 65. As you can see currently we only have VLAN 64 defined. So interface name we'll call it VLAN 65 and then VLAN ID is 65. Apply. And just kind of FYI we already have the trunk to the controller to allow the VLAN 32, 64, and 65. So both of those VLAN 64 and 65 are already allowed. Here for the IP address, just going to give it 1665.16.50 and then 65.1 is the SVI on our switch, which is the gateway. And for the primary DSCP server, we're going to point that to ICE for profiling purposes and then just click apply. Okay, next we're going to have to create a static flex connect ACL that we can apply 
to those VLAN interface. So we need to go under wireless. And right here we have a Flex Connect ACL. So currently we have nothing, so we'll click New. The first ACL we're going to create is for Permit Everything. So Flex Permit All, Apply, and click. And we'll add new rule. We'll do Sequence 1. Source any destination, any protocol, any, DSCP any, action instead of deny, we will permit. And one thing, if you compare this to the regular name ACL on the controller, you can see that there's no direction that you need to define whether it's inbound or outbound. And this is because the Flex Connect ACL has no concept of the uh, direction. It's only when you apply those ACLs to the interface where you see in the second here, that's where you have to define whether you want to apply this ACL to the inbound or outbound direction. Here is just a generic ACL. So click Apply. And that's all we need for the Permit All. So let's go back. I'll create one more. And this one for the Internet Only. So we'll call it Flex Internet Only. Click Apply. We'll click under that and then Add. Sequence 1 will be permitting UDP just to make sure that DSCP is never deny. So DSCP client to DSCP server permit. Next one is the DN. Sequence number two protocol is UDP. Destination port is DNS. And that's also permitted. Next we have to deny all of the private IPs. So sequence number three destination is 10.0.0.0 netmask 255.0.0.0 and that will be denied. Sequence number four is also a deny to a 172.16 IP space, 255.240.00. Okay, apply. Next one is for number five, I believe. IP address 172.16.00, 255.255.00. Deny. And then the last one, which is sequence number six, it will be permit everything else to the internet. Okay, so that's configured. Next, we have to come up with a Flex Connect groups. I mean, you don't really have to, but if you're going to be dealing with, with a large number of APs, it's a good idea to create a group. So that way, whatever you configure under the group, you can just assign APs to it, and all the good settings will be inherited by those APs instead of individually configuring those APs. So for the group name, let's call lm-remote AP. Click Apply. And we'll click on the group name. And here there's a tab called ACL Mapping. And this is how you assign the Flex Connect ACL we just created to each of the VLAN. So first we're going to do VLAN 64. And for ingress, ingress being from the wire to the AP, so the return traffic to the user, we have to permit everything. And for egress, egress being away from the AP to the wire, so this is from the user. We also going to permit everything and that's for 64 going back and do one more vlan and acl mapping for vlan 65 and that's for internet only access again ingress back return traffic to the user from the wired will permit everything but from the ap to the wired we're going to only allow internet and it's the traffic from the user okay so now that we have the acl and vlan mapping as you can see under the Flex Connect groups, there's a lot more that you can configure here, although we're not going to go through all those, since this is all we need for this lab. And the last thing we need to do here is to assign the access point to the group. Back to the General tab, there's a Add AP button, so click on that. And we can just select AP from the current controller if the AP is already registered to the controller. Since we only have one, it's automatically selected by default for us and we just need to click Add. Okay, so now that AP has been added to the group, we can go back to the AP itself, right here, LM-AP1, and go under Flex Connect and VLAN Mapping, and you can see down below right here, there's a VLAN to ACL mapping that the AP got inherited from the group. Okay, next we need to go back to Eyes and modify our configuration because currently we have our results or permission to return the name ACL, which we just discovered that it no longer works for local switching. 
So instead of assigning a dynamic name ECL, we're going to have to switch user to their VLAN where they're 64, 65 to have them or to have their access restricted. Okay, so now going back to policy results, we're going to create a new authorization profile. Click add, and we're going to call it flex dash wlan dash vlan 64 because this particular authorization profile is going to return vlan 64. Okay, so vlan ID 64. As you can see, we no longer use the ACL name. And then we'll add one more for VLAN 65. So that would be flex dash VLAN dash VLAN 65. Okay, so VLAN 65. Submit. Now we go back to our policy for the authorization and then update each of these of instead using the name ACL, we're going to use the VLAN. So flex VLAN VLAN 64. This one is also VLAN 64. And then this one for the network support users is going to be VLAN 65, which is internet only. Okay, and actually we should have changed that to deny access as well. Just make sure it's not inadvertently matched. So deny access. Okay, so with all of those configured, we can now go back to our test machine with our support one. And we can just disconnect and reconnect. And let's take a quick look at the status. Now you can see that before support one obtains the IP from the 64 VLAN, which is 16.64. But now you see that it's just obtained IP from VLAN 65. So that tells us the VLAN assignment is working. And now if you're trying to go to internal resource, which is 162.16.32.40, that might have been the cache. So what we should do here is to go to history and clear the browsing data. Okay, so close that out, bring that back up and try to access. And you can see now that the page is no longer loading for support one. While you try to go to cisco.com, you can see that support one can still access the internet while he's being blocked out of the internal resources. Okay, so if you go to our ICE uh, authentication lock, you can see for support one, it's just received the, the VLAN, VLAN 65. Look into the detail. Everything is pretty much the same, except instead of returning for ICE returning the name ACL, it now returns a VLAN ID 65. And now let's take a quick look at the controller, oh, the client and the controller. See username support one, although the interface and VLAN ID doesn't really show up as 65. And obviously we're not dealing with the ACL name anymore. Okay, but the IP address is 65.32. Okay, and just to prove that we no longer be in the central switching mode, but instead right now we are running local switching, we can try to look up that same MAC address here. And you can see that it's currently pointing out port 14. And if you do show CDP neighbor, you can see port 14 is where our access point is connected. So, and this is because that the user traffic is now dropped off right at the access point since we're running the local switching mode. Let's do our final test for the admin one user with the new setup. So let's lock off. At this point, I just want to show you refresh. Looks like we're not getting the machine authentication quite yet, but let's go ahead and lock in as the admin one. And then let's take another look at the lock. Okay, so there you go. We got the machine authentication that came in. And since we have the machine authentication configured, it got the VLAN 64 assigned to it. And now we just connect it to the SSID. So if you refresh, you can see the user authentication kind of follows that, although it took a couple seconds. 
but it does also receive the VLAN 64 dynamic assignment. Okay, so now if we look at the IP address, somehow it looks like the IP hasn't really changed at this point, so let me do this. Let's go uh, disconnect and reconnect. And I believe that might be because of the active sessions on the controller that we might need to clear, and that's why I didn't give out the IP right here. So let's do that as far as remove. Okay, so let's now remove. Let's try and disconnect. And reconnect. Looks like the IP somehow got stuck. But as you can see that as soon as we clear that session on the controller, our test computer is able to obtain the correct IP right here from the VLAN 64. And then if you try again to access internal resource, you can see we can access those as well as the internet, cisco.com. See that's working as well. Okay, same thing going back on the switch. See where we are seeing the MAC address right now. It's still coming from port 14 where the AP is connected and it's on the VLAN 64. Okay, so that's how you deal with restricting network access when you run a Flex Connect in a local switching mode using dynamic VLAN assignment with the static Flex Connect ACL. You can pretty much apply the same concept with guest access, but unless you plan to provide a differentiated access for your guests, you can just map the guest SSID to the guest VLAN with the static Flex Connect ACL, and you don't even have to involve ICE returning anything special. Okay, so that wraps up our video on ICE 1.2 wireless 802.1x authorization with Flex Connect. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.